okay i'm going to share my screen this is this session this what what i'm going to cover in this session was the first presentation i i have prepared when i started teaching english literature optional 4 years ago and on my youtube channel this is the most watched uh, video so of course you can go and watch it there but here i can answer your questions as well Can you see my screen? Okay. So we have Sanskriti Hasan Anil and yogita also joined let's see so those of you who are, who are going to be looking at this presentation for the first time and wondering who is harshit bharadwaj i did my masters in english literature and i am a, i'm a pg in literature and films and literary theories i spent some time at university of liverpool for my masters uh, level education and presently i run a publishing company and an advertising agency uh, i am an author i am a published author first by my first book came out in 2019 so i have uh, the right passion and the skill set to teach this optional one of the reasons i started this course teaching online 4 years ago was simply because i wanted to be close to english literature and because i have been a student of literature and i think i still am a student of literature so i wanted to find a way where i can be close to literary texts and that's how i started and i have loved every second of it i i i love when students uh, feel that they have benefited from from my experience so my teaching is purely out of passion so what this new course is going to be about this new course is going to be about we will cover the entire syllabus the entire uh, upsc syllabus and there are going to be 35 classes in total approximately 2 2 and a half hours sometimes less sometimes more there will be so there will be 14 practice tests which is uh, something i am adding because without writing your answers practicing your answers and without evaluation uh, all this wouldn't make any sense that is one of the reasons i am keeping the number of students to a bare minimum because i can only handle x number of students so we will cover the entire syllabus 35 classes of around 2 hours delivered on zoom 14 practice tests each text covers around two topics two texts and they are full length texts around 14 15 hour questions in each text and every test is evaluated and i share my evaluation this is this this test part of this course in itself is is worth a lot of uh, value i was initially thinking not to add this because this is really time consuming for me but without answer writing practice i don't think you can you can master this this optional or any optional for upsc level right i am also adding free revision for those who get selected for mains those who are writing mains those who will be writing mains so if you qualify prelims with your english literature optional i will be there to help you revise the syllabus or clear any doubts or queries so this is 
whether you clear the prelims this year or next year or five years from now, if I am alive and you are still there, I will still be there for you. So it's not like I did the course and I, I forget. It is going to be until you uh, become successful with the exam. Schedule is going to be completely fixed. I'll share the schedule with you in advance. You will know which texts to read beforehand and then you come to the class. Okay. This is a very tried and tested uh, method because I've been teaching on an academy for two years, two and a half years. And uh, there we have a very fixed schedule. The classes cannot be changed once you have fixed it. So it goes in a very, very disciplined and timely manner. And that's, that's, that's a great way to study literature. Now a very quick, quick thought on uh, whether English literature graduates should pick this, whether non-English literature graduates should pick this. Uh, what is, is there any prerequisite for you to take this optional? There is only one prerequisite and listen to this very clearly and understand this. You should be able to write and I'm saying write, not speak. You should be able to write grammatically correct English. That's it. If you can write an email, if you can write a page of text. So the only prerequisite, the only prerequisite to do well in this optional is that you should be able to, you should be able to write, write, not speak again. Write grammatically correct English, simple English, no literature English. Some students feel that you got to have literary language or flowery language, a big vocabulary. No, as simple, as clear as possible. You do not need Shashi Tharoor kind of English. Okay, grammatically clear, but simple. So anyone, whether you are a literature background student or a non-literature background student, it does not matter. Okay. Why it is a great optional? Because syllabus is very precise. Competition is low. It also touches, our syllabus touches a lot of GS1 paper because we understand socio-political, historical contexts. And the most important factor that makes this optional brilliant is it teaches you to write great answers. So when you learn to write great answers, <clears throat> you will score more marks in all your mains papers. Okay. This optional gets low marks. It's a myth. This optional is very difficult to do. It's a myth. It has a very wide syllabus. It is a myth. Do not listen to anyone. I'm not saying this optional is great because I teach it. I'm saying it, it is a great optional because I know. I have experience of teaching this optional and I have seen students from all backgrounds, all different backgrounds to do well in it. The only reason, the number one reason students get low marks in this optional is because of lack of teaching and study material and mentors and answer writing. So basically lack of guidance. You go to any coaching center in Delhi or anywhere else, you will not find any English literature optional coaching there. And even if you want to take it, they will change your mind because they do not offer this optional. So they'll brainwash you to pick history, geography, or any other optional that they have. Right? And they give you all this bullshit about this optional scoring less marks, difficult and all that. So only listen to those who have experience of this optional. Somebody who has taken this optional, sat in the mains, ask. Most students who get low marks, they get low marks because they self-study because of the lack of preparation guidance. That's what we are offering here. So let's quickly get over to the exam period. And in the end, I'll take your questions. So we have two papers, paper one and paper two. Syllabus is very neatly divided. The paper one syllabus, every the present exam format has two sections, every paper, section A, section B. Section is drama and poetry, section two B is prose. Now, each section has one compulsory question of 50 marks, which is very important. 
So we have four compulsory questions, 50 marks each. And so they are worth 100 marks out of 500. They are really scoring questions. But unfortunately, most students score very less in these questions. And sometimes they're really scared. 50 marks into 400 marks, and you can do them very quickly. So it's, it's, we'll talk about it when, when, when we'll start the course. So there are two things UPSC has given us in the syllabus notification. One is a list of texts, and another is general topics or secondary topics. So paper one has a list of secondary topics, paper two has a list of secondary topics. This really confuses students because you don't know where you study these secondary topics. So you go back and buy a history of English literature texts, guidebooks, and you ratta maro this. You don't have to worry about these secondary topics because the way I teach, you will learn all these secondary topics by heart. You will understand them conceptually. You don't have to memorize anything. So these, these are the secondary topics for paper one. Renaissance, Elizabethan Jacobian drama, metaphysical poetry, epic and mock epic, neoclassicism, satire, romantic movement, rise of the novel, and Victorian age. I do not suggest any external books. So you only buy the books in the syllabus. Seven novels in paper one, seven novels in paper two, three dramas in paper one, two dramas in paper two, and then list of poems that you can get from the internet. Or I can give you an entire PDF with all the poems. So apart from these seven plus seven plus five, that is about 19 books, you do not have to buy any other text. Okay. And these 19 texts you can also find online, but I recommend you buy a paperback, any cheap paperback, but should buy a paperback. Apart from that, you can buy an online history of English literature because I know most of you will not listen to me and you will go out and buy some secondary text. So if you must, then buy this William Hudson book. It's a small book. That's why I'm recommending this. History of Europe. The understanding of history of Europe is necessary, which I think you will understand, read from your history books anyway. There is this aspects of the novel by E.M. Foster. It's a good book to read. It will help you indirectly. And then I have made a lot of videos on YouTube on, on different uh, topics. Paper two, general overview. These are the topics of paper two. Again, when you look at it for the first time, they are really, really scary. But do not worry about these secondary topics. We will understand, you will understand them and master them over the course of the syllabus. And I will not ask you to go and memorize anything. I will only ask you to do one thing. That is to read the original text. I will not ask you to read anything around. Only a Wikipedia page to understand the socio-politics, to understand the author and the original text. There is no other secondary reading required. I actually prohibit students to do any summary reading, to watch any secondary videos, to read anything online, at least for the first time when you finish the syllabus. Again, for the second paper, you can buy a book on modernism. It's a very short book, Christopher Butler and also a book uh, on postmodernism. And uh, all the secondary topics have been, will be covered in the, in, in, the, in the course. In paper one, section A, we have five poets. If you look at the screen on the left-hand side, drama and poetry, William Shakespeare, John Donne, John Milton, Alexander Pope, Wordsworth, Tennyson. Ibsen is the playwright. <clears throat> it, it, we have uh, a drama by Henrik Ibsen called uh, The Doll's House. And William Shakespeare has two plays, King Lear and Tempest. So five poets, two playwright. And then if you look at the section B side, the right hand side of the screen, the prose section, we have seven novels, 
Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels, Pride and Prejudice, Tom Jones, Hard Times, Mill on the Floss, Tess of the Devils, and Adventures of the Huckleberry Finn. So very neatly divided. And most of these uh, texts uh, we are familiar with. So that's paper one. This, I'm telling you this. Uh, so how, how we understand the secondary topics. For example, when we'll be reading King Lear and the Tempest by William Shakespeare. So on the right hand side, the list of all the secondary topics. So we connect secondary topics with the texts. So when we'll do King Lear and Tempest, we'll understand these secondary topics, the Renaissance, Elizabethan and Jacobian drama. So you don't have to try and read Renaissance, Elizabethan and Jacobian drama separately. You'll have, you'll develop a very good understanding of these topics from the texts. So when we'll do John Donne, we have five poems of John Donne. You'll understand everything about the metaphysical poetry, right? So that's how I've, I've broken it down. Connected the secondary topics with the text. John Milton's Paradise Lost. You'll understand about the epic and the mock epic. And so on and so forth. So I'll, I'll give you, I'll share you the, the video link and the PDF as well if you, if you need. Just get back to Anil sir on the WhatsApp or in the Telegram group and I'll share this uh, PDF with you. Now let's go to paper two. Paper two, again, we have five poets and two playwright. Two playwright as in two dramatists. So who are the dramatists? So five poets are T.S. Eliot, W.H. Auden, W.B. Yeats, Philip Larkin, and A.K. Ramanujan. Two playwright or dramatists are John Osborne, Jimmy Osborne, and Samuel Beckett. Okay. Seven novels on the section B, prose side. Passage to India, A.M. Foster, Kantapura, Raja Rao, House for Mr. Biswas, Naipaul, Sons and Lovers, Lawrence, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, James Joyce and Mrs. Dolebe by Virginia Woolf. Now, some of these texts maybe you not never heard before. Some of these texts are difficult. Okay. But not to worry. They're difficult when you self-study self or try the summary resources or the internet resources. Not the way we study. You can get in touch with me via this email or Anil sir is in the call. You've been in touch with them and uh, you can ask any questions. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to open the screen for people who want to ask any questions. So you can raise hand and I'll let you come and ask your question. Okay, I can see Sanskrit is uh, raised hands. So, <clears throat> you can unmute and uh, ask the question. Sanskriti. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Sanskriti. Sir, I was checking uh, the usual pattern of uh, giving marks in different optionals. Like I was comparing them and I couldn't uh, see anyone scoring 300 plus in English literature. So can you guide us? Is it reasonable to expect if we uh, prepare uh, it adequately and write good answers, then is it is it reasonable to expect 300 plus in English literature optional? Yeah, absolutely. It's a good question. I think most students this is the starting point of uh, doubt. Uh, I think uh, Dikshi Jain or Deep, Deepti Jain, some... some it's a Diksha Jain. Diksha Jain. She scored how much? So I think she scored 294. Yes. So almost there. Right? Yes, sir. You do not, you do not need to score 300 with English literature optional. You know why? No, sir. <laughs> 
if you are good enough to write and get 250 you know 250 is is a power score for english literature optional something like 300 for history history geography 300 you have to get bare minimum right yes sir if you're picking history so the benchmark is 300 and right away it becomes really difficult and competitive and anything less than 300 for history is like uh, you will not be able to compete why and why am i saying that 250 is good enough for history literature english literature between 250 and 300 because in order to get 250 just in order to get 250 you going you are going to have to be a very good answer writer brilliant answer writer so those my 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 students who scored and they were good students uh, they were scoring in the line of 268 275 285 and these are very very good students first attempt for the first time and they all have got ranks in the vicinity of top 100 and top 200 just the guy who got 268 i think 264 navindu shekhar he is an ifs officer so 264 and he got picked for ifs what does that mean because see nobody knows how how upsc operates at the top at the decision making but i have a fair inkling that if you're good enough to go beyond 250, your answer writing, your communication is right the top. You're going to be in the top 1% in terms of your communication and answer writing. You cannot go past 250 if you're not really good with answer writing. And if you're in the top 1% in terms of your answer writing, will it not affect your other main papers and your essays? It does. So someone with poor answer writing, scoring 300 with history, and somebody with brilliant answer writing, scoring 260, 265 in English, the difference in all things being equal, the difference in the GS marks and SA marks, you will get at least extra 10% marks. So if you get extra 10% from the overall GS, you don't need to score 300. That's the simple logic. And I've asked this from with everyone who has cleared the exam with English literature and, and they can vouch for it. That their GS marks are on an average better, 10 to 15% better than anyone else because it's logical. You will not get past 250 if you're not a good answer writer. And you will not get past 250 if you have not covered the entire syllabus and if you have not practiced answer writing under guidance. That's the only reason score students get low marks. You can cover the syllabus, but how will you practice answer writing? It's a completely different way of writing answers. And once you get it, you get it. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So what's your background, Sanskriti? So I'm pursuing a BA in graduation and I'll enter my last year this year. So I'll be giving the 2023 attempt for UPSC. And uh, where, where are you doing your BA from? Sir, uh, sir from my hometown, Meerut, from CCS University. Okay, from the university campus or from the college? Uh, sir, from college, RG College. Okay, okay. I, I, I've done from CCS University. I did my MA. Yes, I did in a bio. <laughs> okay, sir. That's what completely changed the course of my life. Um, okay, sir. Some of the most brilliant teachers. Some of the most brilliant teachers till date. Even though I've had experience with a lot of English teachers and American teachers, but those teachers still are the best. So you are in good okay, hands. Sir. You are in good hands. Don't think twice about um, any other optional. If you, if this is what you're doing, this is what. See, the difficult bit is with history geography. The benchmark is 300. With English, the benchmark is 265. Anything above 260, I wouldn't say 250. Anything above 260, I haven't met anyone who has scored 260 plus and not got selected. Okay, sir. I have now not, not met anyone. So you score 260 plus, you are selected. And I don't know how that works, but the only explanation is that you will get more marks in your GS and essays. 
ओके सर ओके हसन एजाज की क्लासेस क्लास स्टार्ट कब होंगी क्लासेस स्टार्ट होंगी अप्रैल के सेकंड लास्ट वीक में ट्वेंटी अप्रैल के बाद शेड्यूल बी डिसाइडेड एंड आई विल टेक ए राइटिंग टेस्ट बिफोर enrolling all students i will not take any student without a writing test so this is not uh, an open for anyone unfortunately unfortunately i will only take students who meet the basic criteria of writing english okay not uh, not a very difficult you can write anything on any topic about a couple of pages or i'll we'll assign a topic and you will have to write it sanskriti yes so that's uh, what i was going to ask uh, if we have to prepare some uh, no, no, no. some uh, okay. kind of the novels okay sir it's it's just i just need to see whether you write a grammatically correct english uh, language um, okay nothing nothing because i cannot you know work with your english language if the basic criteria is not there there's no point you should pick an optional like history or any other optional and do it in your in your language hindi or whatever language Because yes sir you will you will not score marks and as i said you don't need rocket rocket uh, it's not a rocket science level of english you need very basic english but please uh, do yourself a favor and everyone else a favor if your english is not grammatically right don't do it the fees for the entire syllabus with the answer writing evaluation is 35000 without answer writing evaluation is 25000 this is only for the first 20 students i will only be taking maximum 25 students hopefully not taking anyone beyond 20 and after 20 we will increase the fees because i don't want uh, uh, more students because it's very it takes a lot of my time to correct and evaluate answers so answer writing evaluation with it without it you can also opt for only answer writing evaluation and test series which is where you can you, you have no access to the classes but you only uh, if you've done the syllabus yourself because i i have students in my test series so only test series is also available where you can send your answers and i evaluate and send them back that the fees for only test series is 15000 so 15000 25000 and 35000 payable in two installments and uh, there are no refunds after the first class and limited number of students the zoom classes will have every class will have last half an hour for doubts clearing all the answers that you will send me will be personally evaluated by me and sent back to you after the class after in a uh, predefined schedule okay any other questions this will be shared on uh, telegram this video will be shared and you can request for this uh, pdf presentation so that you can go through the syllabus again okay hopefully that is uh, helpful for you guys and i hope to see you in the class the batch is filling fast it's almost there i don't know the numbers anil sir is uh, looking after this so we'll keep you updated thanks a lot have a great day thank you anil sir and i'll see you in the class bye bye